Nebraska in red. If you're joining us for the first time this season, some rule changes. The sets are shorter, and you don't get as many substitutions. Games are to 25, best three of five. The winner will face Stanford on Saturday night in the final one. The hitting error by Nicole Fawcett gives Nebraska the first point of the match. And you mentioned those shorter sets makes the dominance of this Penn State even more remarkable. Nobody a year ago would have con would have told anybody with conviction that a team could possibly do that. The shorter the set, the more the advantage to the underdog. Armado with the kill. What's almost as impressive as what Penn State has accomplished this year, Karch, is what Nebraska has accomplished. They graduated or had retire four All-Americans from their team last year, and then their starting middle, Corey Cooper, got hurt this season. And yet here they are back in the semis when nobody expected they would do it outside of the state of Nebraska. Fawcett dug up by Larson. Glass going to set Hodge out of the back, and the tip gets down. And not only did they lose four All-Americans, but two of those were players of the year, the whole country. So five players they plugged in. Nobody would have called Nebraska, and nobody did call that they would win a share of the Big 12 title or be back here, and overcame tremendous odds last weekend to come back from down 2-0 against Washington. Mueller got it through. She's one of the four new starters in their lineup this year. Four sophomores now starting at Nebraska. She was the regional most outstanding player last weekend. 24 kills and 16 digs in the region final win over Washington. Wilson sliding behind, gets the kill. So many weapons for Alicia Glass, their setter to choose from. Every single of the other five players is a weapon, and that's why they're all All-American. In fact, the only two that didn't make first-team All-American are the two that are having the best postseason tournament. Anderson, their new center, to Jordan Wilberger, their new middle blocker, who is making just the sixth start of her career tonight. She had barely played when we saw her step in to replace Corey Cooper, who injured her knee, blew out her ACL at Texas. Wilberger has been doing a great job in the postseason, hitting over 330. Glass looking to Wilson, sliding behind. Jordan got a piece of it. Fawcett off speed, popped up. Nope, they're going to say it got down. Point for Penn State. Well, Jordan Larson's already been showing off her skills, and Coach Cook says she's the best player that's ever been in the Nebraska program. We've seen her block already, pass. Let's wait for some attacking from her also. She took that team on her shoulders in that fifth set last Saturday. That's something we may see a lot today, the service errors. It's a high-risk, high-reward system that Russ Rose lets his team do. They get a lot of aces as well, usually. But it drives him nuts a few times. He says they get a little too careless with that. <laughs> we have such great blockers. Let's give them a chance by getting the ball in. Rachel Schwartz, one of three senior, uh, three Nebraska natives in their starting lineup, as Megan Hodge gets the kill. She was the region most outstanding player last weekend in University Park. And you see how Hodge can elevate she loves that fast set and she wins that battle against Sydney Anderson going right over her down the line. Warehouse with the tough serve. Anderson setting gates. Net violation. Hodge touched it up. Point Nebraska. Coach Cook was talking about it yesterday. The only chance we have is to stress them with our serve. Their best server coming up to bat now, Jordan Larson, who served match point, by the way, for an ace last Saturday. Our motto pounds that one down, Point Penn State. And we saw this Penn State team and Harmato not have a great start last Saturday against Cal in the regional final. Harmato back to her normal self, crushing balls down the line and angle on that backslide off one foot. I think the Penn State coaching staff was impressed with the response after Penn State faced its largest deficit of the season last weekend against Cal when they went down by seven points and rallied to win with a 12-2 run to close out the first set. Not only the staff, but the players were happy that they got challenged too. You'd hate to have have your first challenge, the first team that shoves you hard, have it be here in front of 17,000 Husker fans. Hodge. Gates digs it. Larson out of the back long. Point Penn State. 
Amanda Gates showing off one of those seniors that Coach Cook raves about, these three in particular who have made the fun come back on this team, showing her defensive skills on that last play. Armando reached across, point for Nebraska, Penn State helping out Nebraska here in the first set with some unforced errors. And another thing Coach Cook has emphasized all season long is a next play mentality, and they're going to need a lot of that tonight because one play after another is going to be like highlight reel plays, and they have to bounce back and just think about their side of the net. Anderson, strong serve again. Pops it up. Fawcett's dug up by Banworth. Muir cross court with the kill. Wow, that was a Fawcett like angle right back at Nicole Fawcett. Great hustle by Penn State earlier in that rally. But then Mueller crushing hard angle right off the hands that luckily Fawcett got up. Service error gives the point to Penn State. They have not seen a crowd this big this year, but they have seen crowds that are pretty boisterous on road trips to Hawaii, Minnesota, and Wisconsin this year. And with this experienced group, they've seen big crowds in the past. They didn't think that would be too much of, a, of an advantage for Nebraska. That's a big reason why Coach Rose scheduled those. He wants them to be ready for if they face Nebraska in this situation. Nebraska, meanwhile, certainly thought that they could use the home crowd to help them out. Fawcett uses the block for the kill. Point Penn State for Nicole Fawcett, the 2008 Big Ten Player of the Year. A great outside hitter hits over 300. Nicole Fawcett hit most of the year over 400. That's unheard of for an outside hitter. She's got to be a leading candidate along with maybe Jordan Larson for player of the year. The ace for Kelsey Ream, Penn State by a pair. First set, best three of five to decide who goes on to the final to face Stanford. Glass has to play it over. Anderson tried to connect with Wilberger. That's a connection that's only been together for a few weeks. It really has, and it's been working for the most part. Anderson does have to run that some to keep blockers like Ariel Wilson honest in the middle. Back set to Mueller, dug up by Hodge. Also tried to push it deep. Anderson outside of Lindsay Light. The 6'5 sophomore from Aurora, California, who replaces National Player of the Year Sarah Pavin on that right side. And she's had some big matches, but some poor ones. Overall hitting only 212. I mentioned how Fawcett was at about 400, almost double that. They definitely need light to have a big match, and that was one consideration for Penn State. What blocker do we put on her to try to slow her down and try to make Nebraska's offense devolve into just a two-hitter, Mueller and Gordon Larson outside hitter attack. Last, the junior from Leland, Michigan. That's not going to fall on Penn State. Fawcett. They've been able to cover her fairly well so far. Glass going to go back outside to Nicole, and with just one blocker up, that's a mismatch. And that's the trouble and the challenge that Wilberger faces. She has Ariel Wilson coming at her. Does she leave her alone and go out to try to form that two-person block? No, she didn't that time. 6-1 run, and now the Penn State fans making some noise. Glass calling for it. Now Anderson going to work. Last back set, Blair Brown, right at Mueller, got it up. Larson getting a swing and goes deep for the kill. Did you notice early in that rally there was a high dig on the Penn State side and Megan Hodge went to set it, but she kept her back to the hitter. She had so much time, a better move would be to go around the ball and face your target instead of setting it blind, and they didn't get a swing on it. Kayla Benworth serving, that player in the opposite colored jersey is a defensive specialist and a serving specialist. And Foss, Fawcett gets blocked. Gates and Light side by side. 
Well, Coach Rose, his favorite skill of their libero, Roberto Holhouse, is coverage. But she doesn't get much of a chance, only three times per, per set. And that is the rare time the Penn State hitters are blocked. Wow. Oh, Blair Brown tattooed it. Point Penn State. Can't teach height. 6'5 with a good jump. She rockets this ball. Watch coming in off one leg. Baboon. Back set to light. Got it. Point Huskers. You can see Megan Hodge turning and talking to her defender, trying to figure out exactly where to set her body up on light. Light can hit line, like she did there, or angle. And she has to make a choice, Hodge does, as to what to take away. to this team and she can as coach cook says win a match with any skill any of the six skills in volleyball showing off her blocking on that one glass looking for blair brown through the block the 6-5 sophomore from purcellville virginia with the kill penn state by a couple halfway through this first set the camouflage jacket, what's that all about? Is it fight or flight for Nebraska? We'll tell you when we come back. Pairing beer with food works just as well as pairing wine with food. You can find a beer to match up with anything. Sam Adams, I think it's the best beer to drink with food. Yeah, ooh, if people are really honest with themselves, I think sometimes you'd just rather have a beer. A Verizon phone. Thanks, honey. There's more. Oh, no way, a digital camera. <laughs> There's more. A music player. Uh-huh. Oh, wow, a GPS with turn-by-turn -turn directions. There's more. Verizon Wireless has the gifts that give more, like the LG Dare, Chocolate 3, and now get the NV2 for $79.99. Verizon Wireless. Phillips Norelco Architect, the shaver with a flexible head that pivots and rotates freely. So now you can easily get a close shave, even on the neck. Fifteen to thirteen, Penn State leading Nebraska, and Husker coach John Cook, a big visual motivator. And after a regular season loss to Colorado, he pulled out the camouflage jacket cards to get his team fired up and inspired for the remainder of the year. And he said, "We can flee or we can fight." What's it going to be? He loves those visuals, and that's the jacket that came out after falling down 2-0 last Saturday to Washington and on Washington's home floor in Seattle. And Corey Cooper wearing the jacket right there is the one, their great middle blocker who blew out Ray Ciel about two-thirds of the way through the season. She broke out the jacket, and they come back to win in five. And she's got it back on here right from the start. They know that they've got to get to Penn State early if they've got a chance. Hodge blasts it. Mueller tracks it down. Good effort by the Huskers. Back to Hodge. No way to bring that one up. She's just teeing off on, on that ball. And you're right. Don't wait till two, down 2-0 to break out the camo jacket on <laughs> no. Penn State. These, this team is too deep, too good. Anderson looking for Gates. Down the line wide. Point Penn State. We got to see last weekend Roberta Holhouse come out and just crush her serve to start the regional semifinal, get her team off to like a 7-0 lead on Western Michigan. I like her serve at only 5'8". She's got nine aces already in the NCAA tournament. Blair Brown going to go to Hodge. Tried to go over the top of the block and missed it long. Point for Nebraska. Nice reactions by Penn State to slow down Sydney Anderson's attack on the dump. But you can see Megan Hodge come in far too early on that high set. She likes a much lower set come barreling in. First error for Megan. Another service error for Nebraska. That's three, and you can't afford to give Penn State any more help than they get on their own. 
One of the remarkable things about Larson serving that ace to end the match last weekend was she had missed several before that, and she said, I was just trying to get the thing in. Washington didn't even react. Fawcett swooping in out of the back, dug up by Banworth. Hard drawing it. They just come at you from anywhere on the floor. Banworth taking a shelling back here, and that was a great dig, but it goes back over, never twice. 19 to 14, Penn State, timeout, Nebraska. The Nittany Lions want to get back to D.C. again. More on that after this. Um, these all... Saturn, you got it. We Happens a lot later. People do that. Meet the new Saturn at the Red Tag event, where the price in the tag is the price you pay. Right now, get cash back on most 2008 and 2009 Saturn models on top of already discounted prices. See the blonde goddess? She'll pick me for my soft Sensitec cover. Well, aren't you, Mr. Sensitive? My natural leather really improves my game. Natural dweeb, dude. <laughs> I'm lighter and it won't sting. But I'm world class, made with the finest premium leather. Oh, hey, you're sick. Hey, I'm oh, right there. Over here. Over here. Over here. Over here. Uh, Aloha, bodacious beach bunnies. Want to play outside? Yeah, they know where I reign supreme. Penn State leading Nebraska 19 to 14. The defending national champs looking to go back to back and looking to go meet their second president in as many years. They were at the White House earlier this year with President Bush. There's Olanis Abe in the back pondering whether or not they can do two in a row. They actually decided, Coach Rose did, not to go when they won their first one in 1999, not to take advantage of it. Wasn't sure he liked that decision on, in retrospect, and they had a great time. Would love to make it two years in a row now. And even better was the fact that they got to go with the Penn State men's team as well. They won the men's national championship last spring, and they are just the second school to win both the men's and women's in the same uh, school year. And if Penn State goes on to win this, put more pressure on the men's team, which is starting the preseason as the number one ranked team. So it's possible for them to run the table two years in a row. Megan Hodge has uh, been cooking in the postseason, and she's got four kills already in this match. Hitting 480 so far in the NCAA tournament. A big swing from Nebraska gets the kill. You could see Hodge making the choice to take a little something off her serve that time, and rather than jump serving, she just kept it in to try to give her team an opportunity to block or dig. Anderson, the six-foot sophomore from Salt Lake City, on to serve this one up. A season high, 57 assists in the region final win over Washington last weekend. Wilberger couldn't put it down. Whole house there to dig it up. Foss cross court. Russ Rose says her ball just sounds different when she hits it. So much power in that swing of hers. When she chooses to, she can absolutely unload on it. But it started with the great defensive play of Whole House, is the one of these seven that probably will never make All-American because their rallies don't go that long. She doesn't notch many digs because their offense is so good. But she is very talented herself. Green serving. Cross court. Light. No. Yes. Hodge to Fawcett to Hodge. The two outside hitters working together on that play. Hodge really picking it up in the postseason. She told Coach, I'm ready to go now. We're, we're in the NCAA tournament. Timeout for Nebraska and Penn State. 109 consecutive sets they have won. They're working on 110 here in the opener against Nebraska. Best three of five to move on to the final. And oh, by the way, coverage of the women's championship will be on Saturday night on ESPN2. The winner of this one will meet Stanford at 8 Eastern. The Cardinal coming back from a 2-0 deficit to beat Texas earlier tonight. The first time in 27 years the team has done that in the semis. It's the NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship presented on ESPN by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. And what a performance by Faluka Akinrado and Cynthia Barbosa. In the last three sets, they combined for 26 kills and just two errors as the Cardinal will be seeking a seventh national championship.
making their third straight final. Probably would have been four if their great outside hitter Cynthia Barbosa had not blown out her ACL in her freshman year. There's Stanford with their uh, box dinners checking out the action. They don't want to become the first team to lose three finals in a row. Penn State was on the verge of that in the late 90s, lost in 97, lost to Misty May's undefeated Long Beach team in 98, but then won the third time in 1999 for Coach Rose's first championship. Another tough serve from Reem. Oh, nice play by Mueller. But was she into the net? Yes, she was. Two points away from taking the opening set. How would Penn State come into this semifinal? Would they be tight? Would they feel the pressure, the weight of expectations? Or would Russ Rose have his team loose and ready to go? And the latter has definitely been the case here in the opening set. He sure looked loose in the public practices yesterday. Looked the loosest of the four teams having a lot of fun out here. Wilson thunders one home. Set point, Nindy Lions. She has been phenomenal in the postseason. One of their two Second team All Americans. Hitting close to 550 in the postseason is Wilson. Fawcett to end it. Through the block, 1 0 Nittany Lions. And what patience by Wilson. She chose to pass it and run the offense instead. A lot of